Welcome to the Totally Honest Cooking Show. I'm Mark. Today we are celebrating 100 subs with a very special episode using J. Kenji Lopez Alt's The Walk. Now, why are we doing this? What are we doing? What's going on? This is a new thing I, for me I kind of want to try where I highlight a few cookbooks that I like. This one I really like because it does recipes and techniques. A lot of cookbooks just give you, here's a stack of recipes. Oh, oh, oh. And the problem with that is that eventually recipes can only take you so far. The Totally Honest Cooking Show is meant as kind of a beginner platform, but there's only so much watching you can do before you have to cook something. There's only so much reading recipes you can do before you need to start looking at technique if you want to improve beyond the basic I can follow a recipe kind of thing right now after that you start learning why do, why do we do these things now you don't necessarily need a book to do this lots of people learn by doing oops I over salted this this is how I salt properly oops I added too much vinegar to this this is how I vinegar properly you know this book is nice because it makes this the using of the walk which can be intimidating a lot more accessible and it explains process technique and it tells little stories with each recipe like seriously go buy this book if you have any interest in walk cooking anyway today we are doing chung ching dry fried chicken um, from the walk i have adapted slightly due to either dietary restrictions things that you might not be able to find and we'll talk about that a little bit as we go today we're going to start by deep frying some marinated chicken we got to make our marinade now before we even get ready to go i've already got my two quarts of peanut oil in a wok kenji argues that the wok is a superior deep frying tool because it's hard to overfill you know, one of your big concerns about home frying is always going to be how do I do this without causing a major fire and having to go to the ER. Another thing that you want to have ready right away is your spider. You need something metal with holes in it that can pull things out of hot oil. If you do not have that, do not fry anything. Let's get started. I've got, we're doing a double batch of the recipe. So I've got two pounds of chicken thighs. You're going to cut these into bite-sized pieces. The cookbook says half inch, um, whatever you think is manageable. If you wanna trim some of this fat off, do it. I'll probably take off the stuff that's more reasonable to take off along the edges where I'm not gonna destroy the meat. But remember, fat is flavor, so don't over trim. I'll be back once I've got this into bite-sized pieces. Everybody's cut up, so we're putting it in a bowl. Now, you could just mix this all in this bowl. I like to mix everything ahead of time just so I can see it and I can make sure I'm adding it, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with my two eggs. To that, I'm gonna add four teaspoons of soy sauce so remember there's three teaspoons to a tablespoon that's three that's one three plus one is four yay next i'm adding shaozing cooking wine you could also add sherry if you're going for something gluten-free if somebody in your life has the wheat curse and in this case I'm trying to cut out a little gluten so i'm just gonna dump in my sherry and that is a replacement one to one you don't have to make any modifications or anything like that a single batch of this calls for two teaspoons of salt kosher salt um usually i don't double the salt when I cook, but I really should. So I'm gonna do that. Next up, we're adding four teaspoons of salt. Again, this is a double batch. The reason we're doing a double batch is because I really didn't have a use for one pound of chicken thighs. 
for another meal this week. I like to cook everything that I'm making in groups and I just don't have anything else to cook today. Okay. So once these guys are all together. And now we're adding two tablespoons of potato starch from this giant bag of potato starch that I have. And if you can do it without getting it all over yourself, that would be a bonus because let me tell you, we're mixing our two tablespoons of starch in. And it's clumping a lot, which maybe that's why you do this in the bowl with your mitts instead of in this little bowl here. We'll see. That's the other part about this show. We make mistakes constantly because we're not a professional. The goal is to coat the chicken in the mixture. By the time you're done, it should be coated and it should be sticky. If it doesn't look like there's enough starch on things, which it doesn't look like there is because it all clumped up. Yeah. I'm going to rinse my hands and add two more tablespoons of starch. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and mix in my starch. Again, everybody should be coated. Everybody should be kind of sticky. Okay, now this is gonna sit for about 20 minutes and we're going to put together the rest of the stuff that we're gonna need. Okay, we're going to begin by cutting the ends off our green onions. His recipe calls for, I think two. I'm going to clean them up a little bit, peel off that first little layer, and then I'm going to chop up probably four to six, because I like them. Okay, freaking cut them up. Next, we're mincing about four tablespoons of garlic. So I've got about 12 cloves in front of me. Once that's all chopped up, we're just gonna add it in with our scallions. I probably could have minced that up a little better, but I'll be honest with the internet. I'm getting hungry. Next, it calls for about a fourth a cup Szechuan peppercorns, which I'm just going to throw in with our veg. Then it also calls for Szechuan pepper flakes, which I couldn't find, but I believe is just the peppercorns turned into kind of a powder flake sort of situation. So we're just going to throw them in my coffee grinder and and a couple pulses later, we are totally flaked out. And we're adding in about two tablespoons of this mess that I've wrought. Fun fact. Szechuan peppercorns aren't really pepper. They're the fruit of the prickly ash tree. And they're more like a berry than a pepper. The first time I made this, I just omitted those because I just used the peppercorns. You're also going to want a bunch of chili peppers. This is six ounces. Um, we're using Otheim Co which is Vietnamese, you would not find this in the Chinese dry fried chicken, but neither of the two types of chilies that he listed could be found in my local Korean grocery store. So here we are. Now, a word of caution as I clean up around myself a little bit. 
Most of the things in this recipe can be replaced with other things. You can substitute as I have done at least twice so far, right? Uh, the thing that you're gonna have a hard time with is these Szechuan peppercorns. You need these. The reason you need these is because as you eat them, they make your tongue a little numb and they're one of the highlights of the dish. Next up, we gotta peel a little ginger. And the best way to do that, as you probably know, is the back of a spoon. If you don't know that, you learned a thing today. just gonna mince it up and just do the best you can with it don't worry too much jerkins if you can edit out that car alarm please do so Once we're done with the ginger, it just goes in with the rest of the aromatics. Then we're also prepping a separate bowl with half a cup of peanuts, two tablespoons of roasted sesame seeds. If you don't want to make them yourself, they do sell them like this, but I had enough to use, so I'm using the ones I made. And to that, we're adding two teaspoons of white sugar. Now, at long last, we're ready to get frying. Okay, we've got two quarts of peanut oil coming up to temp. We're aiming for 350 degrees. We're going to fry twice, first at 350 degrees, then at 400 degrees. The reason you're doing this is because you wanna drive the moisture off the surface of the meat while leaving the center tender. According to the blurb, that Kenji wrote in the cookbook, frying once at a high temperature would just dry the center out. And you don't want that. Also, you use peanut oil because it's got a high smoke point. If you're allergic to peanut oil, choose another neutral flavored oil that ha also has a high smoke point, uh, something like vegetable oil. A smoke point is the temperature it can hit before it starts smoking. On peanut oil, it's quite high. Oils have two important temperatures. One is the smoke point, the temperature at which it smokes. The other is the flash point, the temperature at which it ignites. You don't want flaming oil. And if you do have flaming oil, don't try to put it out with water. You will have a bad time. Basic rules for deep frying. Watch out for that. Keep the handle pointed toward the back where you can't run into it if you're running around. Don't run around is another good rule. Frying at home is perfectly safe, but take steps to stay out of the emergency room. Nobody wants an oil burn. There's a reason that medieval castles would sometimes pour boiling oil on intruders, right? Okay, we're ready to go. Give it a quick mix with my hand. Again, drop from near the walk. Be careful. You don't want to careful. You don't want to pop the oil. I did that with the first one. You don't want that. And you're just getting this pale blonde color. It's going to be in there less than a minute. But you see how we already got this pale blonde blonde color. And we're just doing it in batches. Notice the hand that I'm dropping it in with is not the hand that I'm skimming it off with. Just makes it a little easier. And we're just keeping them separated enough that they don't stick together. And again, we're aiming for that blonde color. Now we're gonna let this sit for about five minutes. And let it rest. We're bringing the oil back up to 400 degrees. 
takes a little while. Uh, don't leave your oil unattended. It's easy to want to turn it down to low and just let it simmer while the chicken is cooling. Don't do that. Don't leave your oil unattended and walk away. Safety first, y'all. I noticed watching back the last take that my bottled roasted sesame seeds did not appear on the screen, so here they are. You could also just roast them in the oven. We'll have an episode on that probably sometime whenever I use those up. I like them on salads and on vegetables. Okay, we've hit approximately 400 degrees. I'm gonna grab a handful of chicken. It will be under a minute, probably. I'm trying to keep them away from each other a little bit so they don't stick together. It does seem somewhat easier to just slide them down the sides on this one. I will point out to you that the more bite size your pieces are, the higher the drop will be probably and the more splash you will get. So be careful with that. You know, if you were dealing with a chicken leg, it can just ease on down into that oil. But these little bite-sized boys, that's where they get you. We're done frying. Cut the heat. Then we're getting ready to walk toss everything. Before I drain, I'm going to give it about, I don't know, five minutes to cool. We're going to go ahead and try to empty the wok. I've got my heat-proof gloves on. If I had full arm gloves, I'd use them because boiling oil is scary, man. Okay, we're gonna pick her up, walk her over to the sink, and we're just gonna dump her down the strainer into the five cup measuring cup. Easy enough, right? Now, I'm gonna wipe this down. The oil itself, once it's cool, you can funnel that back into whatever receptacle you have for oil. Once you've cleaned out your wok, we're, we're just gonna give it a minute, cool down. We don't wanna have to handle both sides of it with gloves. And then we will get to cooking. We're turning on high heat and we're waiting for the wok to smoke. If you have a wok spatula, now's the time to get your wok spatula out. Okay, you can't see it, but the wok is starting to smoke. So we're just gonna swirl on some of the oil. This is taken from the deep fry that we did. Swirl it around. Drop it to medium on the oven. Then we're gonna throw our aromatics in. That's our chilies, our flakes, our Szechuan peppercorns, our garlic, our ginger, and our green onions. So we're gonna drop these in. We're gonna drop these in. Now, <coughs> I was just gonna say, be prepared to cough because that is woo, and it's supposed to be. And now we're throwing in our chicken. You might have to do this in batches. 
it is better to toss when you're dealing with the wok. But unfortunately, double batch can't toss. And you're just gonna mix this until golden. And then we're gonna add our peanuts, our sugar, and our sesame seeds. And we're done. And if there's anybody else you wanna stick in there, transfer this out to something else. I had made some cabbage to serve this with that I crispy fried in the air fryer. I'm not even gonna bother with it. I've been nibbling at it all afternoon while I worked on this. And this is the star of the show. So serve yourself up a big plate. Get yourself something to drink. Sit down and look at this. It comes out beautifully. I could even go for more scallion. I could go for a little garnish of scallion at the end, in fact. Let me, is there any left in here? Yeah, let's do that. Just the crumbs. Which is the title of my autobiography. Thank you for 100 subscribers. Um, tell a friend, please. Leave a comment if you've enjoyed the show. And I made this dry fried chicken in the walk, from the walk, by J. Kenji Lopez Alt. Link in the description. Great book, great recipe. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Happy 100 subs, everybody.